constant buzz in the background. It is not bees this time. It is motorbikes and helicopters and all kinds of motorized vehicles. And that's because right now on the Isle of Man, it's the Isle of Man TT. And for those of us who live here, it means the island shuts down for two weeks. Hardly anything gets done because everyone is watching high speed motorcycle races on our public roads. But what that means for me here is that the allotment is empty because everyone's out there having fun. And so that means that I can enjoy a bit of peace and quiet and get some planting done. And I need to plant my cucumbers right now. And these are actually a type called market more. These were given to me just yesterday by a lady here in the village. And I have another type at home that isn't quite ready to go out yet. And that's called Gergana, it's from Bulgaria. I've constructed a really simple trellis here for them to grow on. So cucumbers are climbers, they'll climb up anything, they'll sprawl. And this wooden pallet with a couple of posts on either end is going to do the trick. So I'm going to just plant my cucumbers underneath here. And so this will give the plants a little bit of shade as they're starting to grow and you know settle into the soil here. And then they'll be able to climb up the, the supports here that this pallet gives. things that I have to plant here as well other than cucumber so a few days ago I went to the garden center I picked up some lavender a type that I've not grown before it's a pink French variety and I also picked up some chocolate mint which I'm going to plant in a way that will stop it becoming invasive and I also am going to do a little bit of an experiment that could be an absolute disaster so earlier this year, I did try to germinate, pre-germinate some parsnip seeds that I got from our recent seed swap, and they didn't germinate in that moist kitchen roll. But while I was at the garden center, I noticed that they had some growing in modules. Now I've grown carrots that have been started in modules before, and that was just last year, and they didn't really turn out great because the, the roots just kind of uh, like curled and twisted. I suspect that it's the same with parsnips, but I just have to try. I'm just, I just need to see. And if all else fails, I'll have some twisted parsnips and it's better than none at all. So I'm gonna get started with planting the cucumbers and then we're gonna to get to those other projects. And then I'm gonna show you what's going on in my new half plot, which I've just started working on. They're all planted now and I'm pretty happy with this. Let me know what you think though. What do you think of this pallet cucumber trellis? So right next door to it, this is my no dig potato patch and it has a net over it currently because I've been having problems with pheasants getting in and digging up the plants, which has become a real nuisance. But uh, they are really, really tall. <laughs> Now normally I would just use a hoe and just earth them up from the sides, but I can't do that So I'm just layering compost on top of the plant so you can see it here So this is all compost that I took out of one of my compost bins and I've just been layering it in between the plants and on top and It seems to be doing the trick it Doesn't look as tidy and traditional as a as a traditional potato row, but I think it will do. The plants are super healthy, so we'll continue with the experiment and see how it goes. It looks like the garlic is going to be an absolute awesome harvest this year. Look, look at how fat that is. These are the Chinese garlic from last November, and they are really impressing me. I just can't believe that these are from China. It's kind of embarrassing, but I might actually uh, order them again next year or this autumn rather. Next to them, these are 
autumn planted onions and they've already started to bolt so I've been basically just knocking the flowers off and you can see them they're just scattered down here on the ground maybe we can see them they're somewhere here I'll have to dig these up soon they're they're a decent size well not really they're plumping up we should say we'll just leave them and let's see what happens while I was at the garden center I came across this guy it's a chocolate mint and I couldn't resist it really does smell chocolatey but the thing is with mints of any sort so whether it's lemon balm or peppermint or spearmint or chocolate mint is that they will take over an entire bed now at home I've got a peppermint patch that has concrete on one side and lawn on the other and that seems to keep it in check but here at the allotment it would absolutely cover my herb bed if I allowed it to so what I've done is taken the bottoms off of some plastic plant pots I'm going to sink these into the ground and I'm going to put the chocolate mint into one and then some peppermint that I brought from home in the other it looks a little bit bedraggled at the moment but it will recover it's pr it's pretty much invasive <laughs> peppermint do you use something like this for your peppermint or do you have another idea for constraining peppermint or the mint family if you do leave it as a comment below let us know how you would tackle this issue so I'm going to sink these into the ground and get these all planted up planted the pots in well I've dug them in so that the rims are just above the surface of the soil and if they're below the surface then that means that the roots can still spread out so make sure that you can see that if you're trying this yourself so now I just have to water the peppermint and the chocolate mint and let it be on its way I absolutely love lavender and most of the lavender that I grow is traditional English lavender and I have a few little plants here that I've propagated myself I have a video for that check that out if you've got a lavender plant it's easy to create plants for free but there are dozens if not more different types of lavender and lavendula out there and this is one called bandera pink so this is a French lavender so it has kind of that um, the topping on it that looks more kind of like a, a weird head with some petals at the top which I quite like and I'm going to nestle these guys in between my English lavender here as well so I've got three English lavenders already planted and then I've got two of these lavendulas and I'm just going to pop them in here and these guys are all pretty small at the moment but as time goes on they'll fill in they'll get bigger and in all fairness this will just become a wild hedge of lavender which is kind of what I want bees love it they're all over this comfrey here at the moment and this is my wildlife patch so I created the space for bees and for butterflies and other beneficial life like my frogs in the pond here so with these guys I'm just going to plant them in just up to the soil level although with shrubby lavender you can actually plant them a little bit deeper especially if you have kind of leggy plants you can replant them and repot them on and just bury them up into um, where it starts leafing out a bit but these guys are healthy and young and they're just going to go at soil level and then also I've mulched this area with wood chips and wood chips isn't really a traditional mulch but it's what I have here and the idea is that it's going to help lock moisture into the soil and it's already doing that because the soil underneath here is nice and moist and it's going to be a great home for my new lavendula plants These 
are my leggy English lavender plants, bushes rather, shrubs even, and they look a little bit worse for wear. And that is to do with them being, first of all, leggy and me doing a hard prune of certain parts of them over the winter. And also I transplanted these guys from home. So I've moved them out of an area and I wasn't quite sure if they would take, but they seem to be growing and doing fine. It could be that I replace them sometime in the next couple of years. And there's all this fresh green growth that I can take cuttings from. And every little one of these newly formed stems of leaves can create a new plant, a clone essentially, of this plant. But we'll get to that sometime in the future. In the meantime, I want to just disguise the kind of ugly brown branches down below. And so I'm growing again this year a dwarf sunflower called Toy Shop. And I was really impressed with them last year. They were really pretty. So I'm going to be popping them here, there and everywhere. And their green foliage will help to kind of disguise these areas and their yellow flowers will brighten it up as well. The last thing that I'm planting today are these module-grown parsnips. And as I mentioned before, this could be a complete disaster, like the carrots I grew last year. But I'm curious to see. And sometimes you just have to give things a go. And, you know, other people might tell you don't do it, but you could discover new things or new techniques. So I will plant these here in my carrot bed. We'll let them grow through the summer. I'll dig them up. And if at the end of the summer they are all twisted and, you know, basically difficult to peel and to cook, then the question at that point will be, why are these in the garden center in any case? Because this is the kind of thing that a newbie, beginner kind of gardener would pick up to get started. And imagine your first year of gardening, pop these in the ground, you dig them up, they're all twisted and horrible. You know, what are you gonna feel at that point? You feel like something is wrong, that you did something wrong. So we'll know for certain at the end of the summer and uh, We'll address that when the time comes. So as promised, I wanted to show you my new half plot. And I've had to put work on it aside for the time being, just too busy. But this little patch here that I cleared with Jim Collister, I don't know, what was it? A couple months ago, starting to grow back in. And so what I'm planning on doing here is covering it with landscaping fabric and then planting my pumpkins through it and I hope that that will keep down the weeds and that next year I'll lift it up and it will be clean and ready for me to put a real proper mulch on top. The other problem that I have with this plot is this stuff here. Bindweed and it's all over the show and I've cleared quite a bit off of it earlier in this week but it is a real challenge. The roots are really brittle. Every little piece grows another one of these guys and they smother the plants that they climb on. So the landscaping fabric should help there too. But on the plus side, the fruit bushes on this plot are laden with berries. So these are, I believe, a red currant, judging by the size of them. And then and the way that they're kind of clustered along here. And then these guys, these are black currants. So these will get quite a bit plumper than the red currants. Well, it's been a really productive day here in the allotment garden and it's been peaceful and just amazing to have it all to myself for pretty much the entire day. And uh, I think it's time to uh, enjoy a beer. Wouldn't you say? Actually, this isn't for me. This is for my slugs. And this is a beer trap that I'm trialing this year. It's called the Slug X. Got it off of Amazon. Saw some really good reviews, but we'll see how it does. But to be fair, I haven't really noticed that many slugs or snails in my allotment garden this year. And I don't know if it's 
uh, to do with it being so dry or maybe it's my trial, initial trial of no dig gardening. I mean, obviously I'm doing a little bit of digging, digging things in, but I'm just mulching the soil this year. I'm not really fully turning over all of my beds. So hopefully this will catch whatever slugs or snails come my way and leave my cucumbers and other plants ready to go. And if you have slug or snail problems right now, I wanna hear about them. And I wanna hear about what you're using to combat them because they are a gardener's worst enemy, I would say. I think that's the pest that most people have in common. So leave your comments and tips down below and uh, I'll be really interested to see them and get back to you. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I put out a video every Sunday and I feature my allotment garden, gardening tips, and very soon I'll be doing another beekeeping video as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week.